Hey y'all, today on the farm we're getting ready to harvest these soybeans. I got Jason Pittman with me. He is the Bayer Crop Science rep for my area. He knows everything there is to know about cottonseed, but today we're going to test him out on soybeans and see what he knows. Uh oh. <laughs> so these are my two varieties we have out here in the field. Explain what all this means to the layperson. Okay. So uh, AG just stands for Asgro, that's our brand. The first two numbers are the maturity. So this would be a 5.3 maturity, which is kind of a mid-maturing bean for us. We plant group fours, which are an earlier, and then we plant sixes and sevens, which is a fuller bean. The three um, actually gives you a little bit more information to the five. So the smaller that number is, the earlier it is on the group yeah, five scale. Early five or late yep. five. XF means extend flex. So that means you can spray Roundup and Dicamba and Liberty mm -hmm. over the top of it to keep them clean. And then the two is actually the year of its release. So it was okay. released in 2022. Okay. Um, I was wondering, we, we were worried about me and my consultant when we had to get the second variety. I said, everything matches up on that sign, but one one number on the end. He yeah. said, well, I hope we're good, as long as we got the XF. Yeah. Like, we didn't know what the two and the O was. But that's yeah, it's just 2020 year 2020 versus 2022. That's right, okay. yep. Okay. And this one right here has been around for a while, obviously 2020, yeah. but it's been a really good one for a while. Yeah. And so we're constantly bringing stuff forward yeah. every year to try to beat what's been the best. Yeah. And so for me this year, that has been the best. We haven't gathered them yet, but I did a, a formula I found on the internet where you can take the plants per acre times the pods per plant times the beans per pod, and you divide that by the number of, pot, number of beans in a pound then divided by the number of pounds in your bushel mm -hmm. and it will give you a rough guessment of the yield and that's looking just rough at like 80 to 85 and this is closer to 75. of course we have an area of severe deer damage in the back that's going to knock that down hard but just off that rough formula we're looking around 80 bushel beans but one of them these average anywhere from 50 to 55 on a plant and these averaging were 37 to, to 45 on some plants so it's just a little bit different they were planted on the exact same conditions and been treated the same all year just 54 for me has outperformed 53. yeah well we'll see yeah let the combine roll <laughs> yeah. because sometimes the different size of the beans in the yeah. pod makes a big difference yeah too. so a bigger bean weighs up faster than a smaller bean so. that's right so some of them may look like little bb's and some of these may be a little bigger and so all those there's less pods and the plants were shorter i may get more weight here so, right yeah that makes sense one thing about this one that this one doesn't have you know in our area we have some nematode issues yep. and in group five not every group five has some uh, nematode resistance this one does okay um, and so if you have any kind of nematode pressure out here if you have the same race that this one's resistant to that would give it a little bit of advantage over this one and that that may be the difference because uh, be. they, they were planted balls even the same and those when before they dried down those were a good probably a foot taller than these i mean there was a significant difference in the two beans yeah they're both indeterminate beans just like our group fours that we yep. plant down here so we had to desiccate them yep um, our sixes and sevens we typically don't knock the leaves off they just dry down on their own but these we want to take the leaves off that preserves the quality of the beans um, and maximizes your yield and it looks like y'all are pretty close to ready to go so talking about maximizing yield um this is not bean country uh i would call nebraska or iowa bean country they rotate corn and beans back and forth down here where you grow peanuts at in the south a lot of farmers don't grow beans because it interferes with the rotation however south georgia's owned the last three or four world records we're on the current world record i know the last three maybe four world records. i know the last two for sure yeah the one the farmer over closer to you mm -hmm. has had two or three records in a row and then yeah. now this guy from leesburg had it earlier this year they all planted beans that were harvested in august mm -hmm. so is is that a group three group four group bean four. yeah well why is it that we're making these yields in south georgia and we're talking about 200 bushel beans these these guys are making 180 205 207 bushel beans why are we able to do that in georgia but the places that specialize in beans nebraska iowa and whatnot why are they not at that level well i think you know the main thing with those guys is they're really trying to do everything they can to push yield i mean they're they're testing for 
um, foliar testing for issues twice a week. You know, they're putting extra fertilizer. They're spending a lot of money. I mean, yeah. that, I don't know that it's a, it's something that you could do on on large acres, yeah. you know, yeah. and we're also heavily irrigated down here too, where we plant yeah. a lot of our beans. And so we don't ever kind of lack for anything. Um, you get up there in bean country, a lot of those acres are dry mm -hmm. and they're kind of dependent on the rain if they get. Now their soil's way better than ours, yeah. but we can pour the fertilizer to it and help match. This so, this red dirt to hold it, right. to hold that fertilizer. Those guys are, are you, mostly planting on sandy loams. Uh, from what I hear, uh, the guys over in middle southwest, south Georgia, they're getting those yields. My, my dirt here is mainly just red dirt, right. and I can hold it. But uh, I think the main issue that I, that I would have to face that they don't have is getting the uniform stand. I've watched some videos where, where they were talking about the, the necessity for them beans to come up within the same half of a day. Mm -hmm. A bean that comes up a day later or two-thirds of a day later will make less beans than the bean plant on either side of it that came up, you know, 10 hours sooner. Uh, yeah, you got a window there on on cotton, on beans, on corn, where if you don't come up pretty consistent, then one's going to be a dominant plant, the other one's going to act like a weed, and it's just going to be a drain on yeah. that one side. It, maybe it's 10 hours. I don't yeah. know. You know, I don't know what that yeah. exact number they were is, saying but those, you can see it. Those sandy loams, they can get them up even. With this hard clay, I get a little crust, and then right. you know how hard beans are to get up. And this, this red clay, when it, basically I plant them, I cut the water on, and you don't let the water stop until the beans are up. You would be shocked at the acres of beans down here this year. You know, a lot of a lot of guys have planted beans in the past and they've quit planting them. We went heavy cotton and peanuts and corn. Yep. And uh, the beans that they remember didn't yield like these do. That's right. I mean, if they made th 25, 30, 40 bushel, and then in their yep. mind, they can't make any money doing that. Yep. But, you know, our group fours, we consistently do 75 to 100 bushel beans. Now, that's, that's the problem beans. that we have versus the Midwest or other areas farther north of us is we have to desiccate them and then we have about two weeks that we have to get them out or they basically rot in the field on mm -hmm. us. So it's a it's a high risk, high reward. And so yeah. that's why a lot of growers down here kind of shy away from the group fours because we get hurricanes during yep. the time of year right when typical would be harvesting. <laughs> and if that happens and it sets in and raining, then you can't get them out so. and then you don't harvest the whole field. You know, you lo you lost that. Yep, just like our, our wheat season down here is typically the first week of June. And that's usually when we get a good rain. If we get a rain during wheat season, wheat's over with. 